Krishna Nair, graduated from Government Ayurveda College Thirupunitra and PG in Ayurveda from Government Ayurveda College Thirupunitapuram. Later, he joined at Medical Education in 1988. He served as a professor at Agadam Department and superintendent at Panjakarma Hospital, Pujapura, and retired as a principal from Government Ayurveda College, Srivandapuram. Without any further act, I invite Dr. C.K. Krishna Nayak to the session. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for the uh, nice introduction. Uh, Malayalam Ariyanthi Arkar Undo. Okay. If it is so, we shall uh, do it in English. Uh, before that, uh, I think uh, we have to share the screen. Can you see it? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. Okay. 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 Thank you. <laughs> so good. Once again, good evening to you all. Uh, we shall uh, start with the program. Uh, before that, uh, I would like to know how much time I can take. The organizer. It's okay, sir. It's okay, sir. Uh, Time or personal. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Yes, so uh, psoriasis and uh, its management uh, is our topic. However, we shall uh, pray to the God, our Anandari, Om Kirida Hara Kataka Sreni Shwedam Bhiru Vedam, Tradadara Chakra Jadugam, Karasayudam, Shakamam, one day. Okay, there are some basic facts about the uh, psoriasis that we shall uh, go to it uh, one by one. And uh, see, the psoriasis is a genetically programmed inflammatory skin disease. That's a very, very, very important thing. Uh, and the, and uh, one more uh, point is that it primarily affects the skin. That means secondarily, it can affect some other organs also. Uh, that is uh, like uh, joints. That is a very, very, very uh, problematic uh, after effect of this uh, psoriasis. And the prevalence is about 2 to 3.5 of the global uh, population. And approximately 30 to 50 percent of adults with the psoriasis develop psoriasis before 20 years of age. That is also another uh, important uh, point. Then it is a chronic papillus camus uh, inflammatory skin disease where the epidermal cell cycle is markedly reduced. That is uh, 3, 11 hours. That means about, say, 2 weeks, say, 13 days, 14 days. Then the, the epidermal cell cycle is normally in an individual. It is uh, uh, to about 2 weeks. But it comes down in a psoriatic patient to about one and a half day. So, so much speedy the cell cycle is going on and the falling off the uh, cells or the skin proliferation happens. So, the, with very, very exorbitant speed, it happens. Then some other uh, comorbidities like uh, uh, obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes mellitus, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease, psychiatric disorders. In such cases also, these problems, those people suffering from these problems, there are, uh, 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 it means they are the comorbidities or there are many chances of uh, the manifestation of the disease in such people. In many cases, the medicines which are used in the treatment of the above said uh, diseases, it causes or it triggers the manifestation of psoriasis. 
in many of the cases. Then the common sites in the body, all of us know, we have studied, we are now only the brushing up of the memory is what we have already studied in our uh, degree classes is once again, uh, make you remember all these things, recollect these things. The common sites are the knee joints, then elbow joints, lower back that's in between the buttocks, then scalp. These are the very common sites, but some other cases all over the body, uh, we can see the uh, lesions. That is also a very, very, very common thing. But uh, in many cases, the, the patient complains to her, uh, come to us with the scalp problem. They say it as, or they misinterpret it as a uh, dandruff, a severe problem of dandruff, they may say. And uh, the, the thing is that the time period, that is, they may be doctor shopping, going to doctors and doctors and doctors one another, then coming lastly to we people. And in such a case, there is no doubt for uh, uh, the diagnosis, you can simply diagnose it as psoriasis. Because the, uh, if it is a dandruff, it will not be there for so much days because of the medication, uh, application of medication. And uh, it can be, it can have a significant impact on the quality of life. That's also very important, the quality of life by interfering with the self-esteem. <clears throat> Those people <clears throat> suffering from psoriasis, they may have a feeling of the, uh, uh, and uh, uh, say, a, a problem in their mind, so that they may uh, wear, show a very difficulty in going to the society. Uh, among the family members also, the social relations are uh, uh, interfered then uh, school or the office work, etc. wherever they may go and they may interfere with the social life, there will be a decrease in the self-esteem. That's a common problem. Then uh, about 30% of the individuals with psoriasis have an affected first degree family member. So that means uh, there's a family trait can be seen. That is uh, another thing. So whenever we take the case, uh, noting it, then importantly, we have to ask the person whether any other family members are affected. Usually the father or mother or somebody in the family tree, we can see that uh, they are affected with the problem. Then uh, about the types of psoriasis, like psoriasis, scalp psoriasis, gutted psoriasis, flexural psoriasis, Pustular psoriasis, palmoplantar, erythrodermic, nail psoriasis, you know, all so many types are there. Sometimes uh, the mixer type of uh, things are also, maybe you should say, for example, the scalp psoriasis and nail psoriasis may be there, or uh, the pustular psoriasis and the scalp psoriasis may be there, like that, if we can see. Then what is uh, the plague psoriasis? Typical. Erythematous plates with the overlying white scales are often thinner and smaller and more often on the face and the flexural areas. Uh, say, I think, uh, that's, uh, see, there's a photograph. You can see the, the boy has uh, come to me earlier and uh, see the white small scales uh, able to uh, lay it down or fly down like that it uh, goes on. See, the, here the whole body is affected because it is a very advanced the case. Uh, the, actually, the flexural uh, areas, you can see, it, but here all over the body it is affected. So, plagues, all spikes, uh, plagues are there, and that's why it is called uh, plague psoriasis. And uh, again, the scalp psoriasis usually affects, yeah, there is no need of any explanation for the scalp psoriasis because uh, many of uh, people have come across such cases. Usually affects the back of the head. Uh, however, it can occur on the whole scalp also. See the point where we comb 
and where we are combing and stopping it, at that point, there will be heap of uh, the uh, plagues can be seen. So that's very important. So on the back of the head, it is usually uh, manifested first. Then red patches of the skin that is um, the, the itching will be there and the, the, the person uh, scratches there and uh, leaving a red patch. These red patches are covered with the thick silvery white scales. So see the epidermal cell cycle is very, very much reduced. And uh, uh, even if uh, within hours, the scales can be seen there. Then can be extremely itchy, can cause hair loss in severe cases. Of course, in many of the cases, about to say 80 to 90 percent of cases, the hair loss is the main complaint. See, the uh, one point in the in this case that is the differential diagnosis, the dandruff and the uh, scalp psoriasis. Usually, the dandruff will be uh, limited to the hairline. But in psoriasis, there is no such a limitation at all. Uh, it extends down. See, here the forehead also and back of the, uh, or the sides of the, uh, also are uh, very much involved in this. So thus we can uh, differentiate it. Then see here, it's a much more advanced case and the whole body is uh, affected. And uh, here they look at the uh, forehead and uh, the ear, ear lobes, see, and, and the back of the hair. Uh, see, the whole part, whole body is uh, involved. And uh, uh, sometimes uh, it becomes very difficult for us. The Gutter psoriasis clinical features, the second most common type of psoriasis in children, papules erupt on the trunk approximately two weeks after a beta hemolytic uh, subtopical or viral infection. Say after a sore throat, sometimes after two weeks or within two weeks, there may be a development of the gutter psoriasis. Very special feature of this gutter psoriasis is that the, uh, the lesions are just like very small, rounded things. I think it will be there. See, uh, the very small, uh, rounded lesions all over the body. And uh, it seems that if the person was uh, uh, running in the uh, rain, in the drizzling, and they, he come out of the drizzling, uh, we can just like that, the, uh, the drops of water, how it appears on the skin, just like that, in gutter psoriasis, the lesions will be like that. That is very easy for identification also. And uh, this is the uh, flexural psoriasis. Sometimes it may start from in, in babies uh, as a diaper rash. As the, in the first, the diaper rash forms, then it develops from there. Uh, may, many cases, a, a small irritation in the skin. Uh, later, it develops into psoriasis. So the diaper, the usage of the diaper, actually we cannot say, but uh, it is better only in, in inevitable uh, situations we shall use the diaper. Otherwise, it, it may be avoided. If the baby is at home, then there is no need of any diaper rush. But the modern uh, parents are they are very fond of using this uh, diaper, but there is, there is a chance of developing this type of uh, skin problems. So uh, we should be very careful uh, about uh, using the diaper because there are, there are chances of developing it into psoriatic rashes. And uh, another uh, type of psoriasis pustula. It is characterized by localized or generalized the superficial sterile pustules and can be accompanied by fever, malaise, and uh, arthralgias. See, the, you can uh, uh, very well appreciate this. And it is in 90% or 90, 95%, it is mistaken for eczema. See, there, there is not much difference from this, but uh, sometimes 
there may be a little bit of oozing also and uh, it mimics the the development of uh, eczema there uh, how you can then uh, differentiate this thing you just uh, ask the, the take the history then you can see that for many years or months the, the people the patient is uh, uh, running to the doctors for many a times without much relief if the steroids some sort of uh, uh, steroids are used uh, then they will give a temporary relief but on the second week itself there will be the manifestation and uh, there that itself uh, help you in uh, diagnosis of this type of psoriasis see the palmo plantar uh, psoriasis uh, many cases you might have seen uh, see the and also sometimes the clubbing of the fingers at the fingertips the club shaped shaping uh, may be seen along with uh, the nail psoriasis also may be there uh, then see the uh, uh, foot uh, is affected see that is uh, that's a typical appearance of this uh, uh, plantar psoriasis uh, in many cases there will be the cutting of the skin there is a cracking may be seen and it, it will be very painful for the person to walk and uh, uh, sometimes there may be bleeding also from the crack so it's, it becomes very painful for the patient to uh, accommodate with the problem Uh, the uh, main thing is that see once the cracking is there the cut edge when the person walks uh, it uh, scratches uh, together and then it will be a painful affair and erythrodermic psoriasis uh, this is the most difficult uh, type of psoriasis for uh, uh, treating the whole body can be covered with a, a fiery red rash there is usually intense itching burning sensation and widespread inflammation and it is very very difficult for us to handle such cases uh, there is uh, widespread exfoliation also body more susceptible to loose proteins and uh, uh, and fluids leading to dehydration and malnutrition and uh, uh, along with uh, our uh, treatment modality that is sometimes uh, certain people some of us may implement very rigorous pathyas also on these people then because of this thing the person becomes uh, too lean or lose the proteins and fluids from the body hypothermia is also possible see the erythrodermic uh, psoriasis Uh, the uh, lower part of the body is uh, shown here see the uh, entire body is uh, affected with such a type of uh, problem see see the whole body and the case the whole body is uh, affected and this is the later stage after the manifestation then the the, the whole skin is uh, peeled off uh, from the see uh, the both, uh, feet the type of uh, lesion the the uh, scaling and uh, finally what happens is that uh, the uh, skin will be uh, peeled off uh, just like a, uh, a the, the whole thing has attached to the limb then inverse psoriasis the another uh, term is flexural psoriasis it shows that it in flexors uh that uh, either in the axilla or in the groin region or in between the gluteal uh, portion it can be seen the, the wherever the flexor of the skin is there it manifests there that is why it is called flexor psoriasis more common among the overweight obese individuals and is not characterized by scaling that is very important uh that is uh, the scaling need not be a uh, noted criteria in this uh, such type of psoriasis then inflamed bright red smooth patches of uh, skin can be very itchy and uh, painful so at first there will be itchiness and uh, later it turns into 
the uh, burning sensation or painful feeling. If the skin rubs together in the folds, symptoms will be aggravated. Then sweating in the skin folds may also aggravate affected areas, armpits growing, skin between the buttocks, the uh, skin under the breast or belly, etc. The obese people. Uh, the most uh, uh, dreaded problem is that because there is always a uh, wetness in the lesion, there can be a super infection with the fungus also. So uh, the treatment becomes much difficult. See, the, this is a very uh, a simple case, a flexural, of, a flexural psoriasis, the very small uh, lesions in the axilla. But it is very uh, common among uh, the patients and also it is more dreadful in uh, the, if it comes in the groins. See, and many people uh, may uh, misinterpret it as the fungal lesion and uh, the, the medicine may be given to uh, contract and no, to, to, to treat the fungal infections. Then nail psoriasis, yellow red nail uh, discovering. It uh, looks like a drop of uh, blood or oil under the uh, nail plate and it is commonly it is called the salmon patch. Pits in the nails, also known as pitting of the nail matrix. Pitting is the result of loss of cells from the uh, surface of the nail. Then lines across the nails, that's also another uh, important feature. Uh, most important thing is that the a nail uh, becomes detached from the nail bed. And when we see it, it uh, uh, appears as an arch. And if a little pressure is applied over there, then the whole nail will peel off or uh, uh, come up uh, because of the pressure. See the typical uh, uh, scene of the nail psoriasis. Then the diagnostic tools, the signs and symptoms, the red patches, that is uh, in all the type, various types of uh, psoriasis, we can uh, take or see such uh, signs and symptoms. Red patches of the skin covered with the silvery scales, then small scaling spots, dry cracked skin, itching or burning or soreness, then itchy plagues, small bleeding points when the scale is peeled away. So that's also a very important thing in diagnosing the uh, problem. And that is called the auspice sign. That is, if we apply a little pressure for a peeling of the uh, scales, then after the uh, peeling off, you can see that at the spot of this uh, psoriasis, there will be small uh, spots of bleeding and that is called, that is because of the high proliferation of the uh, capillaries. Uh, if we exert a little pressure or remove the plagues forcefully, then you can see these capillaries will turn off and small spotting of bloods. And that is called a auspice sign, and it is a confirmatory sign of psoriasis also. Then coconut phenomenon, that's also very important. That is, uh, uh, say, after a little uh, hurt in the skin, then after quite some time, once it uh, heals up or it is, uh, begins to heal, it may develop into its uh, into psoriasis or it uh, transforms the shape into psoriasis. Sometimes uh, the, the people may uh, have a, a, a small cut with a, a knife uh, while uh, doing some kitchen work, or uh, even if a, a, um, the thorn of a bogain villa uh, it creates a little problem, a scratch in the skin, then that itself, it's a very simple thing, but it uh, uh, transforms into, or it develops into psoriasis, and that's called the Cobnets phenomenon. 
Then residual pigmentation following the healing of lesions. That's also important thing. See, sometimes the, the abrasion or the scratch may heal off, leaving a residual pigmentation. Then quite after some time, say for one month or two months, then uh, it develops into lesions of psoriasis. Then how it is confirmed? It is confirmed by the biopsy. Uh, we need not to go into details like this. Then, uh, okay, differential diagnosis. That's also very important as far as we are concerned. Then the fungal infections like in planus, seboric dermatitis, exfoliative dermatitis. Sometimes these problems uh, will create much uh, difficulty in the differential diagnosis of psoriasis. The appearance may like or mimic each other and uh, it becomes much difficult. See the fungal infections. Typically, we can see the, the, uh, the active periphery is there and in the middle, uh, sometimes the inactive areas may be there with a severe itching. And uh, important point is that day by day, the, it develops around. In a circular fashion, it develops. That is very important and it is a fungal infection and the speed of the development is also much more. Whereas in uh, psoriasis, these uh, lesions will be as such usually. Then uh, quite after sometimes, say six months, uh, four months or six months, etc. sometimes these lesions may correlate together and it becomes a big one. But the, uh, by that time, if it is a fungal infection, it becomes so big. And uh, uh, the fungal infections, in many cases, it responds to medicine very quickly. These, these are the important points. And uh, see this uh, uh, lichen planus. Uh, the difference, uh, you can uh, have the uh, feeling or the picture in your mind of psoriasis with this lichen planus. See, actually, it, uh, it may feel it as it is black. But actually, it is not pure black. Uh, a, a violet tinge is there. You see, in the, especially in the freshly uh, born lesions, the uh, violet color will be there. And the most important thing is itching will be there. And after itching, sometimes because of the severe itching, uh, what happens? The, the crust may fall off or the upper part may fall off, leaving a raw area and a pure blood as such will be coming out. And that's a uh, differential diagnosis for uh, lichen planus. And this also, very, the response to medicines is very bad, very low. Yeah, whatever medicines are given, except steroids. If steroids are taken or applied locally, then uh, some cure results said three, four uh, weeks of treatment may cure it. But on the second day itself, whenever you stop the cream, then you can see the development, very quickly, very fast development of the lesions. Then the seboric dermatitis. See the, the here, the nape of the neck and the upper part of this uh, is seen. And uh, with the small uh, pustules at the, uh, in, the, in the scalp area, usually wherever the, the, the speciality of this uh, seboric dermatitis is that wherever the hair growth is there, especially scalp, the development of the seboric dermatitis is seen because uh, it, uh, uh, what say the sebaceous glands are also involved in it and the oozing will be there and whatever be the medicines are taken or used for with the no result at all. That, that also helps in diagnosing the seboric dermatitis and the crust will be formed of uh, uh, pure uh, yellow honey uh, crust of uh, crust appearance is seen in the seboric dermatitis. See, that's a severe case, uh, uh, which uh, came to me for uh, treatment. And uh, see, 
the it uh, develops into developed into the sides of the cheek also up to that area it developed then the exfoliative dermatitis as the term uh, describes the exfoliation can be seen but without much lesion sometimes there are reddish tints may be there but there is no cutting or cracking of the skin is there but exfoliation is severe that is on the uh, usually it, it is uh, it happens all over the body and on the every uh, day morning you have to choose or take a broom to collect the uh, scales such a scaling tremendous scaling may be seen in exfoliative dermatitis then the management approach usually the vyadhi vivari the chikitsa is more preferred rather than dosha vivari the chikitsa or hedu vivari the uh, chikitsa since it is an autoimmune disease in in my experience in almost all the autoimmune diseases our approach should be a vyadhi vivari the chikitsa uh that that is my uh, my opinion and uh, sometimes a difference of opinion may be there as of, of course i accept but uh, this type of uh, uh, if we go to the uh, shastra bhaga then this vyadhi vibhri the chikitsa is much more uh, preferred then uh, this is more scientific way there is a protocol systematic treatment the general protocol is there specific protocol uh, is there then symptomatic treatment for systematic treatment and symptomatic treatment both are done or both are needed in certain cases uh, after the or in between the systematic treatment sometimes we have to uh, give some uh, symptomatic treatment also as the situation warrants the general protocol under uh, parimarjana that is snehan that is snehavanam then uh, snehavanam in internally and externally we have to use the sneha uh, since it is a, seems to be very dry lesion and except in erythrodermic psoriasis in uh, this external application of oil we have to be very careful sometimes uh, the external application of the oil uh, may not be so easy and so acceptable to the person then shodhanam that's a must then rectamoksham shamanam asayanam deiva vipassana chikitsa it's the in natural we can uh, say or we can enumerate like this then behar parimarjanam swedam and it is a very a questionable point whether this swedam is uh, useful or not in many cases a simple swetha is okay uh, that is uh, the a, a warm uh, dip or a, a, or a bath in warm water itself is enough for, for the swetha but in certain other cases or certain doctors are uh, doing sometimes uh, the uh, uh very nali sweda or like that so many people are doing or sometimes they may make uh, them sit in the sun uh, certain modalities are there of course i am not uh, uh, uh what say objecting all these things it is uh, acceptable uh, depending on the situation of the case but i am doing only or in my opinion or in my uh, treatment modalities only a bath warm wa in warm water is acceptable or i used to give no other big swedam is uh, used then shastra prayogam then lebam udvartanam abhyangam etc in the uh, some, uh, sometimes you may suspect that wa, how this uh, udvartanam may be there of course in exfoliative dermatitis we can use uh, uh, exfoliated dermatitis or exfoliative type of uh, sorry as we can use the udvartana uh, vidha siddhartaga isnanam siddhartaga vacha like that the, the yoga is in ashtanga hridayam i prepare it and uh, do the udvartana that is also very good for uh, such cases and depending on the 
demand of the uh, situation we shall decide whether it is yapa means needed udvartana means needed or abhanga means needed like that then rakta moksham then charam lekhanam chalanam avagaham parishegam etc in, in many cases depending on the situation we shall uh, choose one or two things out of this then asti uh, tasayanas the tubaraga dailam uh used then uh, baguji then bhallataka chitraga shilajadu desasunduram desa uh, gandhi majiga etc it can be used and uh, uh, i used to take not all these things only one or thing one or two may be taken depending on the situation i formerly i used to give the tubaraga daila and a very precaution should be taken because it is very krishna in nature so only 5 ml of the double filtered tubaraga daila double filtered tubaraga daila is available in the market so of only 5 ml uh, will be given in the morning with the uh, milk and uh, see very important warning <laughs> should be given there that is once it is taken there will be two three times vomiting and uh, two three times vidhana will be there so be prepared for it uh, otherwise the, the physician may get bewildered to see such a things want to do like that but of course if the vidhana is given then uh, it, this will be there and uh, i used to give only for 5 ml for 5 days that's all not more than that uh, because it is a very severe action is there then uh, certain people some of my friends are giving this baguji pallataga chitraga shilajadu everything and i used to give the rasasunduram either rasasunduram or rasagandhi mejigal and uh, if the rasasunduram is given you should be very careful about the dosage <coughs> especially in the present situation the other people are looking on us to uh, find fault with us about the rasa preparations or heavy metal preparations like that so the correct dosage is 80 to 120 mg of rasasunduram at a time and it should be given not more than 15 days so two weeks it's okay but not if it is given for uh, much more days then because the problem is that you may see very tremendous effect when it is given the rasasundura is given so uh, after 15 also sometimes uh, because of the result you may feel that uh, it can be extended like that no i never recommend this uh, extension for more than 15 days and if you want to give it okay give it for 15 days first then leave a period of about 30 days or at least 15 days without such this medication then once again one more one more course of this drug can be given so and uh, the rasagandhi mejiga also can be used because in certain cases the rasasunduram may give in certain cases uh, reactions uh, are there uh, that is uh, what is the reaction sometimes you may uh, inquire see just uh, some uh, allergic reactions just like some allergic reactions that is uh, small papules uh, will be developed uh, all over the body with the itching and another thing is that sometimes a burning sensation but if you look at the patient or if you feel then nothing will be there but the person will be feeling uh, a okay, uh, burning sensation sometimes they may say that the fumes may be going out of their body or from the ear, uh, eyes or ears and uh, from the scalp etc such problems are there in such a thing is seen you have to immediately stop the application of the sesasundura and give the, the antidote is the milk just give and the, in the case of the soryasas not give too much milk only about say some 100 ml of milk uh, and add a 100 ml of water 
in the morning and in the evening you can keep simply and uh, in uh, in much more severe cases you can give the pepper quatha pepper uh, marija can be used that's also another antidote that is about say uh, some 10 to 15 grams uh, depending on the size of the patient or weight of the patient if it is a very young uh, a very uh, what's a, a lean patient then you need to give the full dose so 10 grams is okay do not crush it do not crush the pepper just boil in a glass of oil uh, out in a glass of water then sieve it and give the water do not crush it that is important so uh, two or three days application or uh, procedure will be then the complication will be over <clears throat> and uh, regarding the dasagandhi meduga also 500 mg is the dose that uh, you can give twice daily and in these cases there is a very chance we should expect a very chance of reaction in such cases and uh, we should give three days for the first three days only once in a day even though the rasasandura is given or rasagandhi meduga is given the uh, rasasandura 80 mg 80 to 100 120 and say on an average 100 mg in the morning itself with the honey it is given for three days only in the morning then you wait whether it is acceptable to that body or not if it is not acceptable the reactions will be there then you stop it just withdraw the medicine that will be enough regarding the rasagandhi meduga sometimes there may be some uh, intestine and no the stomach irritation may be there uh, sometimes in the feeling of indigestion may be there or bloating of the uh, stomach may be there but you do not give anything else simply some jeera water may be given or the same thing the pepper quatha can be given that's enough and uh, uh, if it is acceptable then or the the problems reduces then you can continue the medicine or otherwise you shall withdraw it withdraw it and go for the shilajadu shilajadu can be given without any complications <coughs> then management uh, principles in that the deiva vyapasra chikitsa that's also very very important in in the treatment of psoriasis Uh, we should uh, uh, remember that sometimes the people may have the faith in god or not whatever it may be but do some sort of deva vipassana yajikil sapatarajis prada dama yama seva tyaga shila biyogo duja sura guru puja sarva satveshu maitri shiva shiva sudatara bhaskar aradhanani prakritida malava avam kushtam mulayanti it's very very important Uh, depending on their belief or the uh, religion we can uh, give them some sort of uh, this type of things may be advised if they do it or uh, suppose say if they are very atheist they don't uh, believe in uh, uh, god or such things of course sarva satveshu maitri that itself will do uh, much good to them and keralaya kriya kramas that is uh, special to kerala that is takradhara then shiro leva then shastika leva all these things are done uh, this are uh, uh, this takradhara when you go through the takradhara you can see that here, nowhere in the bhalasudhi it is said that it is good for psoriasis but uh, you can uh, uh, on the, after the, the the purpose of this takradhara is that whatever gains are or whatever uh, uh, okay gains are obtained in the as part of the treatment it should be sustained for that purpose the takradhara is used and shiro leva also then shastika leva also this this thing we are doing it practically we are doing it so these are the uh, modalities suggested and uh, we can use it 
or in a may we can make a protocol out of this so many things are there in ayurveda and the, in the treatment modalities are there we have to choose it one by one what or things can be given or can be done in a psoriatic patient of course the rootshana we can do it because it is vataka pha in nature so yes it is a uh, vataka pha in nature what is so yes means i sometimes uh, certain people say <clears throat> uh, especially from the northern india it is they termed it as dedru then uh, sometimes uh, the people say it as kidiba like that then sometimes the people say it as the sidhum so so many things and uh, another uh term use the is ega gusta so because of the uh, scaling um, it is one of the main features of the psoriasis so i very prefer to call it as ega gusta and uh, this egam ega gusta or sidhu gusta they are both are vataka pha in nature and uh, first we have to do some sort of rootshana so for that by either vaishwanaram or shraddharanam or panchagolam with the takram or ashtajornam with the takram can be taken so for the first 3 days 2 3 days this is very good uh, then we shall start the snehavanam and snehavanam acha snehavanam shall be given for 7 days and that we shall come into a table in the next slide set will be there so for snehavanam tikra kalam mahadikta kalam kalyana kalam adavaladi kalam all these things can be used depending on the availability and your choice uh sometimes there may be difference of opinion in dosha uh, chinda but you don't worry about it this is a vyadhi vibhita chikitsa so you can use any one of these things then swedanam ushnodaka snanam that i prefer ushnodaka snanam then vilajanam avipatti in draksha kwatha is very important uh, and it is advisable lots and uh, if it is given in, in that is avipatti jurna is given in draksha kwatha uh, the difficulty in taking the avipatti is also reduced or you can use the avipatti with the honey along with draksha kwatha you can uh, take then shamanam ulujyadi kashayam tikta kashayam vanja tikta kashayam mahadikta kashayam depending on your choice and uh, type of uh, patient then the uh, the appetite etc depending on many uh, points you can choose different things we cannot uh, give a uh, simple thing or a single thing and it is not as uh, a fair in the case of ayurvedic treatment also but uh, in the uh, research modalities we we cannot do like that we have to well we are forced to select certain uh, drugs certain uh, special combination of drugs for that then we cannot give all these things here for the purpose of reference and for your knowledge i am giving either either one either one either one like that it is given but if you are doing your research work then all these things cannot be taken only single one can be taken gobi jandradi spray kadapana guliga aishwara gulukulu etc if it is a babies say below some 12 years then gobi jandradi or kadapana guliga can be used and in adults we can use the aishwara gulukulu then vitpala geram uh, uh, with chambaratyadi or gopalpanjadi shuddha durvadi murvanna pinda theeram or lajjalu keram alone and this can be used that also depending on the situation we have to decide because certain people are having are uh, having allergy to vitpala keram uh, so sometimes we have you have to try the combination with the jambaratyadi or sometimes if it is not acceptable of course the gobal majadi may be given or shuddha durvadi or even murvanna itself can alone can be used and the jadu karam is also a simple medicine that you can prepare uh, in your pharmacy or you are in your under your supervision and it's a very simple thing it can also be given in months of salt then utkarshanam uh, trapala churnam siddhartha gadi snana churnam 
can be given for Utkarsana. Uh, then Kridam in small doses, then Takradhara and Shastika Lepa. So all these whatever things are we have studied in Ayurveda, we have abridged these things for the uh, uh, treatment of psoriasis as treatment modalities. Uh, from that, we shall decide or choose one by one if it is needed. If that is needed, you can take. And if you feel that uh, something is not uh, needed or if you uh, skip it, okay, there is no problem at all. See, the treatment modality what we have adopted is uh, Divana Pajana uh, Shantarana Jorna, 5 grams. See, this, uh, this is for a uh, research purpose. So we have to choose only one drug or one combination of drug. That, uh, that was the research for the research purpose. So we uh, took for the Vena Pajana, the Shadharana Jornam, 5 grams BD with warm water for 5 days. Then Snehavanam with the Mahadik Tagadam, 7 days. That is, that is the usual time period. So we took the, uh, or we selected Mahadik Tagadam. I, in the previous slides, I showed you so many Kradas there. But here we took only one. Then Thaila Parimardana with the Sorset oil. There is a Vidpalagar, nothing else. But uh, the Sorset oil is uh, prepared by the Aushadi that we selected it. Then Ushnodaka Snanam and Thaila Parimardana for one day. Then uh, the Mrudu Shodhanam with the Vellaragadailam, uh, 15 ml at uh, 6 am with warm water. In the previous slide, I told you that uh, the for uh, Virajanam, Avugati Jurnam with the honey and Dratra uh, Kwadha uh, can be taken. But this Vellarag uh, Thailam, from my experience, it is a very special one. It is uh, uh, described in a Siddha system of uh, medicine, but it is available in Kerala. So Vellarag Thailam, and uh, the thing is that just like uh, Gandharva Gastadi Erendam, or uh, Erenda Sugumaram, etc. This Veldrakta uh, is prepared. The base is the Gandharva Hastadi, Gandharva Hasta Thailam. So, what happens if the medicine is taken, there will be two or three Vithajanas will be there. The castroid, because of the property of the castroid, and that is needed also. And it is given for seven days. A course of the medication is seven days, not more than that. And if you feel that a little more is to be given, then of course you skip one week time. That is, a course of seven days is taken, then leave away one week. Again, you can give seven days. The one, one, two times, that's okay. Two courses are okay. The, the, from my, the whole experience, I can say that two times, two times, it's okay. Then uh, uh, Shamana Chikitsa, ask the Shamana Chikitsa, Panja Tiktagam Kashayam, 90 ml BD, then Kaishore Ulgulu, 1 BD, Taila Parimardanam, and Varajurnam for Snana, Snanam. The Rasayana Chikitsa, then for the Rasayana Chikitsa, I told you either the Rasasandura is given, Rasasandura or Sagandhi Mariga is given. Uh, that is uh, Rasan Chikitsa 5A Akradhara with the Mahatitagam Kashayam. Seven days. A uh, special preparation is there for the Takradhara. Uh, you know that and it is available in the uh, Sahasra Yogam uh, Takradhara. Then with the, it is prepared with the Mahatitagam Kashayam. And it should be done seven days. Then Shamana Chikitsa should be continued. And it is 100 milligrams twice daily with the honey. Shamana Chikitsa continues along with the, these medicines also. So the total duration, it comes about 42 days. Initial assessment on the first day when the patient comes to you. Then uh, first review on the 15th day, second review on the 30th day, and third review on the 60th day. So we can, the person can be discharged after 42 days. That's on 43rd day, you can discharge the patient. But Ask the patient to come over to you on the 16th day for a review. Uh, then it is as part of the research uh, 
program uh, what we did as a simple thing we did the study uh, in 50 patients we selected 50 patients uh, the uh, PASI score and the percentage everything is given there see the abridged note the PASI score as you know the PASI score uh, it, it, it should be done to assess the uh, severity uh, of uh, the psoriasis problem. PASI means uh, psoriasis as uh, uh, severity index. So the severity of the uh, psoriasis to calculate this thing, the PASI score is used. And uh, the age group here we have, uh, of course, uh, as part of the study, we have divided in the uh, patient in the, according to the age group. So 1 to 10.9, that is, uh, you know, this uh, mercy score is uh, 10 patients were there. Then the next trends are 8. And the third one, 21 to 30.9, that is 22 patients. Most of the patients belong to 21 to 30.9 strata. So it uh, coincides with the finding of the um, Western uh, treatment things, they say that uh, the many of the cases, about uh, uh, 30 to 40 percent of cases, belongs to the this strata that is in the age of 21 to 31. See the after treatment that was before treatment and after treatment there with the uh, it, the, the PASI score came to a zero. This is a very, very good result given that is uh, 25 people. That is about 50% of the person with a zero score. That means it, it was very well accepted and uh, it was very useful. The, our treatment was very useful. Then 1 to 5, 12 cases. PASI score, uh, it reduced to 1 to 5, then uh, 5 to 10, like that. It goes on and uh, the total 50 cases were there. See, 25 cases attained uh, uh, PASI score 0 after treatment, 50%, then 12 cases. Like that, the present treatment modality is very effective. Our uh, conclusion of the study was our present treatment modality is very effective in the treatment of psoriasis. Uh, then a little more words about the treatment modalities in the Western uh, medicine. Phototherapy, what they, what they do is the uh, ultraviolet uh, D uh, rays, phototherapy, then laser therapy in if the affected area is very small. Then oral medications, methotrexate, cyclosporin, acetrexacin. Then uh, in such cases, you know, the, there are harmful effects are there for the medication. So very judiciously, it should be used. Then biologics and uh, climatotherapy, uh, that is uh, in European countries, the Dead Sea, the people goes there and uh, lie down uh, for quite some time because the water contains so much minerals. Because of the uh, metals and minerals, is full, so the people may go there and that's a climatotherapy. They will lie down for quite some time. Then uh, psoriasis triggers the points. See the streptococcal infection that is after the sore throat, then trauma to the skin. There is cut, scrape, bite, bug, uh, bug bite, then infection, sunburn. Even the sunburn can uh, cause the or a, a starting point, a trigger for the psoriasis. <coughs> Uh, then uh, certain drugs, uh, intake of like uh, lithium, then uh, the high blood pressure, heart medications. That is why I, at the time itself, I told you that uh, this type of medicines, sometimes not because of the uh, morbidity, but by using the medicines, it may trigger the psoriasis. Then HIV, stress, stress is a very important thing in the case of manifestation of uh, psoriasis. Then use of tobacco, alcohol, etc. Then tips to prevent psoriasis, flare-ups. 
യൂസ് മോയ്സ്ചറൈസിംഗ് ലോഷൻസ് അഭ്യംഗമാചരെ നിത്യം സജരാശ്രമ ബാധക ദൃഷ്ടി പ്രസാദ പുഷ്ടിയായി സ്വപ്ന സ്വപ്നത്തോട് ആർട്ടിക്കിൾ ദി ഇൻഡിക്കേഷൻ ബെനിഫിറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദി അഭ്യംഗം ദെൻ ടേക്ക് കെയർ ഓഫ് യുവർ സ്കിൻ ആൻഡ് സ്കാൻ അവോയ്ഡ് ഡ്രൈ കോൾഡ് വെതർ ദാറ്റ്സ് ഓൾസോ വെരി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഡ്രൈ കോൾഡ് വെതർ സംടൈംസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് ദ കോൾഡ് വെതർ ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് ക്യാൻ ബി എ ട്രിഗർ then avoid medications that cause flare ups lithium propanolol and quinidine but we cannot say like that but there are every chances of that thing so judicious intake of these medicines uh, is advised then uh, avoid scrapes cuts bumps and uh, infections even though it is a very simple thing so the protective measures protective gears should be used especially in agricultural uh during work then uh, get some sun but not too much use sunscreen uh then reduce the stress that's very important join a yoga class or get a massage a good massage is uh a good uh, relief to the patient so that that's also very important then reduce alcohol consumption exercise and maintain a healthy weight okay uh, some photos uh, from our uh, previous experience or previous studies see the uh, appearance there is no need of any uh, description for the case see uh, i showed you uh, the this photo in uh, earlier slide see the uh, hands see the appearance see after the treatment it became like this see the other side and this another case see uh, the lower legs uh, full of uh, the lesions then she became so normal see the crust forming all these things is over and now it becomes almost the skin become became almost normal see another case of the uh, palmar uh, psoriasis sometimes it may be like this uh we may feel a little bit difficult in uh, in the diagnosis and we may interpret it as uh, the eczema usually it happens so even the uh doctors of the western medicine they diagnose it as uh, eczema and give medicines for that thing but without much uh benefit see uh the the it's such a, a later a stage of the uh, person suffering from the uh, psoriasis see after it's almost after the uh, treatment see it's much better this is another case but this also after the treatment we have taken the uh, photograph but the first photos are somewhere else and uh, you can see the neck region there is a blackish discoloration much more and it persisted for uh, quite some time and then afterwards it subsided see the same person and uh, useful drug combination uh is there that it is uh, taken from the trivandrum ayurveda college of pharmacy when i joined there as a tutor uh the it was nimbandilavagadi was there and i am not sure whether it is available now or not but uh, this with a very tremendous uh, benefit the nimbandilavagadi and nimbam it's an anubhuda yoga Uh, formerly there were uh, 
some uh, invited doctors, Vaidyas, were there. And uh, this combination was uh, implemented by such a person, such a Vaidya. And uh, it was uh, there for uh, decades. Then uh, I don't know what is the uh, present situation. Anyway, it's a very good combination. Nimbam, Nilavaga. Nilavaga is, uh, is uh, Chennamogi, that is Senna leaves. Senna leaves. Nimbam, Nilavaga, Khadira, uh, Apeya, Shariba. So, the, because of the presence of this Nilavaga and Apeya, of course, there will be drastic purgation will be there, but you will have, especially in weeping types of skin diseases, not only in psoriasis, almost all the skin problems, so this is uh, this was used to give it, used to give. So uh, the Nimba Nilavaga is very important and with a little uh, change in the combination, sometimes Nimba Nilavaga, Khadira, Ashwagandha, Aragvatha and Dari uh, was also used. But the preparation, the combination uh, given in the Ayurveda College Pharmacy was the first one. The uh, usual drug combinations, this Shonida Amradam, this, this is available in the market. Shonida Amradam is available, but the thing is that only three medicines are there with the excellent results. Guluji, Abhaya, Shariba. That's all. It is available in, in the market and uh, you can get it as the prepared Kvatha. But uh, the prepared Kvatha is having some problems uh, nowadays, you know. So, the uh, as far as possible, you ask the patient to make the kashaya themselves and take and this vashadi kvatha that is vasha draksha abhaya when looking uh, looking on this uh, individual drugs you may feel that uh, how it can be given for the skin disease diseases so but it's an excellent combination vasha draksha abhaya so equal quantities just like this shonidamradam kvatham this vashadi kvatha is also very important. And uh, this is, uh, you know, that this uh, Amaranthus uh, spinosite is freely available uh, in Kerala. Uh, this is uh, for uh, making what's a, 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 a panagam. That is, uh, just for drinking, this uh, medicine can be used. To, pluck uh, the whole plant, then uh, leave off the roots, then make it into a small uh, pieces, uh, cutting it, then uh, make it into a uh, bolus in cloth, then in boil in water. That's enough, some uh, four or five minutes, that's enough. When it is, uh, there is no need of reducing the amount of this water, but using this water for drinking purpose. Uh, while you are taking food, you can drink this there without any taste, no taste at all. So, but it is very benefit for benefitful for the psoriatic patients. Very simple thing, without any money, uh, no need of uh, much uh, preparation, preparative tasks are there. So, just boil it and drink. That's all. It's as a prophylactic measure. This medicine is given by uh, late by the Bushnam Rakhavan from the uh, uh, sar, I got this uh, combination. The scope of Ayurveda in uh, psoriasis, that is stress, is very important. Stress can make psoriasis worse and psoriasis can make one stressed. See, uh, depending on the uh, effect of the social life, the quality of the life is reduced uh, for these patients suffering from uh, psoriasis. So the stress will become, stress will produce it. And once it is manifested, then it will increase the stress. So a vicious cycle is formed. So manage stress with yoga and medicines, that is very important. And some sort of the Vipassara Ejikitsa also may be given. There are currently no international standardized guidelines for medical treatment of psoriasis. Only palliative measures are there. That is why the people go to the Dead Sea or uh, subjected to the uh, UV light. 
So there is no definite treatment there. Or sometimes they may be given medicine as, uh, such as methotrexate. You know, the methotrexate is given to the cancer patients uh, to reduce the proliferation of cells. Of course, there is liver damage. That's a complication. So such things are there. Then the scope of Ayurveda, uh, there comes or there stands. So we can do immense work or uh, our uh, role to the society. We can provide our role to the society for the treatment of psoriasis. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Next, we go to the Q&A session. Dear participants, if you have any doubts or questions, please raise your hand or type in the chat box. Sir, there are some questions in the chat box. Uh, shall I read, sir? I know, please. Thank you, sir. So first question ah. by Dr. Savita. So treatment mm. of cabbies in children. Mm. Well, today's subject is psoriasis. <laughs> uh, whatever it may be. Uh, the, in, in scabies, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. Scabies, um, I see, you know, the scabies uh, mites are there. So uh, we have to keep that point in mind. Uh, what I use is that the treatment, uh, especially the scabies is seen in young children. So... And nowadays, uh, the, uh, the incidence of scabies has come down because of the hygienic uh, nature of the people. The education level has increased. So they know that the infection can be prevented. This is an infestation, not infection, infestation. It can be prevented. So by keeping hygiene itself, that is the first thing. Second one, uh, the some medicines we are giving uh, I used to give this either the Uluchya the Kashayam or Uluchya the Kashayam or Chikta and Kashayam along with the Aragoda Ashram because in the case of young children, they may not take our Kashaya as such. So I used to give it as a combination with some sort of Arishta. So Aragoda Arishta can be given. And uh, the Khadir Arishta, I will not prefer much uh, because there, there is some problem, some irritation in the skin can happen if the Khadir Arishta can be taken, but not, not in all cases, not in all cases. But so the Luchadi Kashayam, Aragad Arishtam, and uh, if the uh, motion is not uh, in a good condition, then Api Arishta is also given. So 200 ml of uh, Gulichadi uh, Kashayam, 150 ml of Aragudarishtam, and 100 ml of uh, Apiarishtam. So it makes 450 ml. That is uh, one bottle full, the one Arishta bottle full. And it, depending on the age, some uh, 10 ml to 15 ml to 20 ml twice daily, depending on the age of the person it is given. Then, uh, the, the for uh, bath, either the I don't know what is the botanical name, either uh, the pullani uh, is used to make uh, water for bath, or even asadracta indica or uh, vapor uh, can be used. Then uh, the, the as usual oils can be used. That is, say, so many oils are there. Uh, the nalpamradi. Drug of choice is uh, Nalpamiradi, then Yeladi, uh, then uh, the end is of uh, scalp, I don't know, this scabies. Uh, sometimes uh, the uh, Gopal Pajadi is also uh, used. Uh, then uh, if uh, uh, fever, sometimes occasional may be there. Then in such case, either the, depending on the age, uh, Kombanjadi, uh, like uh, yeah, children's medicine can be used. 
then if it is specifically it is a, a, a scab is, then I used to give a soap also with uh, some antibacterial high agent containing. Uh, it gives much result. No need of giving much very big treatment. These uh, things are okay for it, but sometimes it might take three, four weeks. Then it will come down one by one. And the cleaning or keeping of the hygiene is very important as well. Thank you, sir. There's one more question by Dr. Savida. Sir, in which of the condition Tyla is not used? Uh -huh. uh, in the case of uh, psoriasis, Tyla should be used for as an external application. And the internal application of Tyla is banned, but we are giving Gruda, either uh, Aragudha Mahadiktagam. And uh, in that the Aragudha Mahadiktagam is preferred than Tiktagam or Mahadiktagam. That is the personal experience in psoriasis. But in uh, other cases, can be uh, used. But for uh, young children, for the extra, for the application of uh, external application or Bahir Parimarjanam, for young children, the coconut oil is better, not the Tiladaila. So, Nalpamiradi Kerab, that is why, according to the Kerala tradition, these type of medicines are prepared for the uh, children. Nalpamiradi Kerab, Dineshvalyadi Kerab, uh, or Gopal Panjadi Kerab. Uh, even though I see the Gopal Panjadi is prepared as Ghradam, but nobody, nobody is preparing this Ghradam nowadays. It is not available in the uh, market, but Gopal Panjadi Kerab is available. So the uh, Kerab, coconut oil is very important as as the young children, the skin problems of young children are concerned. Then Chambaritiyadi Kerab. So depending on the availability and also depending on the condition, uh, we have to select it. Thank you, sir. The next question by Dr. Mini. She's asking about the Velluruku Thailam. From which company? And the dose, please. Yes. Velluruku uh, Thailam is prepared by the Shantigiri Vaidishala. Shantigiri Vaidishala. That's near Trivandrum. It is prepared and it is available only along with them. In Kerala, they are the distributors. They are the uh, producers and also the distributors. Nowhere else can be available. But in um, Tamil Nadu, because the system, uh, Siddha system is much more uh, prevalent there, so it is available freely there. But in our state, uh, the only in Shantigiri is available. Shantigiri Vedishala outlets, it is available. And it is the package is 100 ml bottle. Uh, so the uh, 15, 15 ml. Uh, is the dose, right dosage for a person. But depending on the uh, costa or the strength of the costa, you, you have to adjust the dose. If it is, uh, say, some, uh, suppose the child is uh, some 12 years or 15 years like that, then you have to give a try with the 10 ml, not the 15 ml. For adult, it is 15 ml. And in not all the cases, you cannot take the 15 ml as a, a rule. Uh, sometimes you have to increase it. Anyhow, you start with 15 ml. Then you can see how it happens. We need two or three times of Vedajana. That's all. Not more than that. Then if it is not uh, uh, in a proper way, then you can increase the dose to 20 ml. Uh, and even that 20 ml is not working well, then you can increase it to 25 ml. And anyhow, all together, you have to give this seven days. That's all. Not more than that. Because there is, I, or I, I, I came across certain complications uh, if it is increased more than seven days. Yes. Thank you, sir. And there is one more doubt by Dr. Mini. Sir, uh, about Karapan Guliga, from which company? Uh, I used to uh, give this Karapan Guliga from Baifa, Kotem. 
I feel it too much. Uh, by far, by far drugs. Thank you, sir. And next question. So what about the recurrence after treatment in your study? Yeah, uh, that's a very, very good question. Uh, the psoriasis as such is a problem. There is the cyclic recurrence of the uh, diseases there. And uh, in these cases, up to the six months, no recurrence at all. Then uh, I am not able to say that whether there were uh, two, three patients came back after one year. And in many cases, uh, see, I am uh, in that field for many years. If proper uh, treatment and proper pathya is observed, the recurrence is very rare. Uh, pathya, that means the avoidance of non-veg non -veg uh, food items. The non veg, I, I don't know, I cannot say it is so specific, but say certain uh, proteins or amino acids are creating certain problems to certain people, not all people, for all time. It seems like that. So, uh, the keeping of pathyas is very important. I used to advise the patients not to take the non vegetarian items whatever it may be, whether it is egg, fish, or uh, this thing. But certain people, people request, see, I can take an egg in a week, like that. So it is, I don't know, the people will not understand this thing. Uh, in many cases, I, I happen to see that. Uh, for the first one year or one and a half years, they will be very strict. But afterwards, since they are not suffering from anything, they may say, now I am all right. Then they will decide, they will decide themselves that I am now I am all right. I can take the food items which are prohibited so far. So once or twice they may take a taste it. Then nothing happens. Okay, then they will uh, increase the, the uh, amount of the uh, food items. Then after that, uh, some quite some time across certain cases that uh, they were so strict about themselves and they, they decided they will not take any uh, uh, non veg items. And for the I have observed that for the first five years, nothing happened, no lesions developed. And uh, that person was a teacher, school teacher. So he is very, very adamant about, about the advice. And uh, it was like that. Well, after the five years, then there developed a single lesion on the back, lower back. Then he came to me. So like that, it happens so. Very usually what happens is that the, the, the thinking of the uh, person or the person cannot withstand the uh, urge to take the non veg item. So then yeah, there is a chance of coming out. But see, we cannot say sometimes the uh, Western medicine doctors may object us, uh, the our view, because they may say that, of course, the uh, fish oil, uh, omega 3, containing omega 3, should be taken and it is a treatment. As part of the treatment, it is made use of, like that they may say. But as per our view, it is like that. And uh, I advise them, even though they are taking the vegetarian items, the curd should be avoided. But they can use the takra with a little bit of turmeric, make a curry, and they can use. But it should be takra, not the curd. Then uh, this urdal exception is given. They can take dosha or idli. I advise them. I permit them. But no urdal vada. Then uh, the uh, our uh, kandala, that is, uh, I think it is horse gram. Uh, and our tapioca should be avoided. So uh, some five items. It is, uh, I advise the people to avoid and all other vegetable items they can take. I permit them. 
they can take it. And even some of us are very uh, reluctant to give them brinjol. I have seen so many cases. That's advice is like that. The brinjol cannot be given. No, no, no such thing like that. They can take. No problem. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sir, next question by Dr. Sheikh. Sir, psoriasis is contagious disease or not? It is not a contagious disease. It's an autoimmune disease. So it will not contract to other persons. Thank you, sir. Next question by Dr. Adul. Sir, treatment protocol of psoriatic arthritis. Huh? Psoriatic arthritis. Oh, arthritis. Arthritis, uh, that is the combination of the treatment for arthritis and psoriasis should be given. Uh, that is, uh, the either the if the Kaishore blue is given, then it is a best medicine. But nowadays, I come to the practical uh, thing. I used to give the Romalia Ford from the Himalaya company, uh, two BD. The actual dose is one BD, but I used to give two BD, the two tablets twice daily. Uh, then all other medicines as usual taken in the case of psoriasis. Uh, that will be enough. But the thing is that if the uh, joint is inflamed, then the inflammation will come down, but not the edema. Uh, that is, if the fibrosis happened to that joint, then it will not come down. It will be there forever. Whatever be the type of treatment, whether it is uh, um, uh, if you go to uh, st United States, it will be like that. The, uh, because the development of the in the development of this fibrosis, nothing can be done. But the pain will come down, and uh, they can uh, bend the joints to a certain extent. But no, uh, they will not. The other uh, joints will not be get involved if we are giving the medicine. Thank you, sir. So, next question. Uh, sir, please explain Copner's phenomenon. Copner's phenomenon uh, is that I, I told you there is, I think there is no much explanation. That is, once an injury happens, up to that time, the person will be very normal. Actually, no problem at all. But at the moment, uh, an injury happens, even with a simple thing. That's why I told you about the uh, injury from a bogain villa, a thorn, uh, or like that, or a simple cut, or even uh, if uh, the child falls on the ground and a scratch and abrasion happens, then on healing of this abrasion or the wound or the cut, then by the process of healing, it changes into the development of psoriasis. And that is called the Copernicus phenomenon. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes. So next question. So what parameters are considered in PASI score? Ah, PASI score, uh, that's a little uh, complicated uh, procedure. Uh, that is, uh, it is available in the uh, net. You can, uh, you can go through it because uh, depending on the uh, size of the lesions, percentage is calculated and, and we are uh, adding together, making into a uh, concrete percentage. So the person is suffering from psoriatic lesion 30% or 40% or 60% or 38% like that. It's a calculation, simple calculation. Uh, it, is, uh, it is demonstrated in the uh, internet. It is available there. Thank you, sir. And there is a last question by Dr. M. Gunashekharan. Sir, please suggest some internal and external treatment for diabetic wound amputation advised condition. Diabetic wound, um, we know it is always a, a difficult thing because, see, in the, in the development of the diabetic ulcer, uh, usually what happens is that uh, it, it happens in the extremities, especially on the legs. 
it is far away, it's a place far away from the heart. And uh, as part of the development of the uh, diabetes mellitus, the shape or the texture of the blood vessels change. And uh, leading to the slow circulation to that particular area. So if any wound is formed, it, it is cured when fresh blood, plenty of fresh blood is uh, going to that place and the nutrition is given and the blood cells are fighting with the uh, invaders, invading microbes, then the normal wound healing will happen. But in the case of the, the diabetes uh, patient, a diabetic patient, the thing is that the blood is uh, contained, blood contains uh, sugar more than normal level. So if the sugar is there, then the microbes will be grown very quickly or it's a very uh, it's a congenial medium for the growth of the microbes. And adding to that, there is less circulation. So once the, the ulcer is formed, then it is very difficult to heal. That is the thing behind the diabetic ulcer. Then uh, the, if it is not given proper uh, atten uh, attention, then there can be severe uh, complications left. Like that, sometimes the the um, uh, the putrefaction or the and develops. Then the pus formation will be there. The microbes will invade uh, to the other parts. Then uh, develops and finally it develops into septicemia and uh, other complications. Then finally ends. Uh, so in, in in the first cases or in the first stands or the, in the, I mean, this is a very slow process, but at first we can do something. At the wound, then for the uh, healing of the wound, whatever usually we are using, like the glue preparations of this things can be given. But I used to give a uh, karaskara uh, chira thara there. And it, it is uh, seen that it's of immense help in wound healing. The karaskara chira thara, the karaskara chiram is prepared. That is, uh, the, the bark of the uh, karaskaram is taken. That about some 15 grams, 1.5 one five, one five to 20 grams of karaskara bark is taken. And the external uh, aspect is uh, uh, taken off. Then uh, it is squeezed well or on a stone or something like that. Then it is uh, uh, put in uh, chira, that is milk and water. There is one glass of water and three, uh, one glass of milk and three glass of water. It's a combination. Then this piece of karaskara uh, uh, is uh, put in, then boil it for uh, say some five to eight minutes. By that time, the, the, the resin of the Karaskara will come into the milk and turning the color into a light brown. Then stop it. When then we have to cool it by just like making the tea in the tea shop. We are uh, we have to do like this. Then it will come down and do not uh, allow it to stand still and uh, the uh, this thing the supernatant layer is formed the skimming you know not just uh, boil and uh, then cool it down then you can use it uh, for the thara and for the thara you have to do it very slowly very very slowly not all of a sudden it should be poured over there you should take some 40 45 minutes to uh, do the thara with uh, this karaskara chira then uh, that's after the chira thara you can uh, wipe it out and with the subjatya dikradam you can apply. And uh, if the uh, wound is so deep, then you have to do the utkasha. For that, I usually use uh, a special preparation that is uh, either the ashwagandha itself is powdered and uh, 
it is cooked in water. It's a, it's a very simple thing. As a, a, a spatula, a big spatula is is taken, then with the water and or uh, five to eight grams of this powder or rice powder, this brown rice. Uh, that uh, brown rice also the powder is taken and uh, with a little water you have to boil it and very immediately no need uh, to take it or uh, show it in the uh, fire for may so much time some three to five minutes that would be okay and once the boiling effect is there then place it down once it is cooled you just or cooling down during the process yeah, uh, one teaspoonful of jatjati kratham also added to that. Mix well, then place it uh, into a, a pad, a dressing pad, then place it over and uh, paint it. That's all. And uh, once you do it in the morning, then you can remove it on the next morning only. Then do it again, the Karas Kratyatara and uh, this type of procedure. And uh, it's a special thing, and I, I, I get usually good result over there. Thank you, sir. So one of our participant is asking your contact number, sir. Ah. So Dr. Kimaya okay. is asking about your contact number. Okay, you may write down now. See if they are ready. I shall uh, uh, spell it. Nine double four seven two six zero one three eight. Once again, I shall tell you nine double four seven two six zero one three eight. Thank you, sir. Sir, our q and section is seems to be over. So shall I wind up, sir? Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the uh, for all listeners or the part participants. See, they are uh, all of them are my colleagues, or sometimes they may be my students, maybe there. I'm not know. I am not sure of it. Whatever it may be, uh, in Malayalam, it is said that Tanodu Mayal Tanandu Likanam. That is the equal consideration should be given to all of them. So. Uh, if any doubt is there, just uh, call me in number anytime. It's a mobile. That means anytime you can call. And uh, if I am not taking, that means I am engaged at detail. So after half an hour, you can contact me. Uh, there is no need of any uh, formalities. Just call me. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you sir. for the keen interest shown in this talk, in this class. Thank you. So before winding up the session, I take this opportunity to extend my sincere gratitude to Dr. C.K. Krishnan sir for accepting our invitation without any refusal. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this great session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I once again thank all the participants for your active participation. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.